it's been about a year and a half since we built out version two of our Jeep car camper. If you're curious about our version one, you can check it out here or in the description. To recap that build, it was very modular, very easy to store, also really, really easy to build. This version was built out to be more of a longer term build, so it is permanent. It has a lot of storage and it also has a cooking and kitchen workspace built in. So let's take a look. In order to maximize the usable space and decrease the weight of our vehicle, we actually ended up taking out the back seats entirely. It's a little bit complicated, but totally doable. So if you wanna see how that's done in a Jeep Renegade, skip to this part of the video. We built out everything in two sections, a front and a back. And that's because we weren't able to remove our spare tire from the spare tire pit underneath here. So in order to maintain access to that, just in case, we made sure that we could remove this whole back piece and get access to our spare tire. So let's start at the back because we're here. This back section acts as our kitchen, pantry, and storage. It's built like a drawer and has two drawers in it. On the left side, we have one long drawer that we use as our pantry and general storage. And in here, we would have our bins for coffee. We would fit our hiking pole first aid kit, everything that we need for quick access while we're on the road. On the right side, it's a little bit more fun. This is our kitchen and cooking area. The base box is the same as the left side, but this one has more stuff in it and is also dirtier because we use it for cooking. In the back, we have everything from propane to our pots and pans to our mini stove. Everything for cooking goes in there. Over here, we usually put our cutting board and this is what we use as our work surface for cooking or making sandwiches. And then when we cook, we pull out this little pocket drawer that actually is on tracks and it fits our Coleman stove perfectly. The design and build is very simple. We're using a lot of gravity on our side. So we do just have a little locking block at the top of this drawer to make sure that we don't pull this out too far. And it actually stops in place so that this is in the right place where this doesn't just fall all out. And these tracks are quite sturdy. I think they're rated to be 25 pounds each track. So it's strong enough to hold the stove, a pot, water, propane. No need to prop it up from the bottom or anything. And when you're done cooking and everything is cooled, it packs away just like this. Oh, and we also have this uh, metal flap here because it does actually um, move in and out as we're driving. Just by putting this bracket here, it actually stops it. Let's move over to the front where you can see the full benefit of removing the back seats. The front half is also built like a box, but a very awkward and bespokely shaped box. And that's because the side, back, front, top are all square like a box, but the bottom, because we took the seats out, it's kind of like rigid to the floor of the Jeep. So that was a little bit difficult to do, but super worth it because let me show you how much storage we have. We call these our cubbies and this is where we put all of our personal items, sleeping bags, pillows, and our shoes. So it can fit a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. And it is separated in the middle by a wall that supports our weight as we're sleeping on top. Because the bottom is not enclosed, there's actually more room underneath the box for tucking things in like our emergency kit and shoes. On the very front of our platform, it is just one straight board and that gives us enough support for our front box. When we get to camp and we wanna convert the setup for sleeping, it's really simple. All we do is lift up these locking latches and flip over these last maybe foot of board and that's enough to support the head part of our mattress. And then to put it away, we just flip it back, unlock, and we're good to go. So that does explain the design decision here of this front flap and side flap situation. It made sense for us. Maybe you can find a different solution for yourself, but it is helpful because if I do wanna just prop this open, I can versus it just opening all the way onto Tom's side. And then we're like fighting our flaps back and forth. It's never happened. And that was by design. So it's not stupid if it works. <laughs> you can see that the front and the back boards of the front piece are overextended and that's because we wanted to have some space for storage as well. On Tom's side, we have our water bottle. It fits snugly in between there. On my side, usually I'll have a tripod. Um, I'll hang a couple things in between. Pretty functional for us, although not required. So if you are designing something like this, you may wanna leave it out if it doesn't make sense for you. Lastly, in order to secure both the front and the back sections together in a still removable way, we screwed on hooks on each side and secured it together with turnbuckles. So we just make sure that they are level and then we just tighten it 
and we're good to go. When deciding on the length of this front box, the two things we considered were how much space we wanted at the bottom for storage and how much space we wanted to be able to recline back. So you can see not too much space, but if you're not really a big recliner like me, then that shouldn't really matter. Hi friends, Tom here. We're going to be taking the back seat out of our Jeep Renegade. Ours was a 2016, so yours might be a little bit different, but worth a shot. The back seat comes out in three pieces, so the first step is to lay them flat, and then you will see a screw in the middle. Go ahead and take that screw out. It's the only screw, so it should be pretty easy to find. An Allen key should do it. And then under the screw, there's this little clip. Pull the clip and lift the seat. So that was the easy part. The hard part is this spring-loaded contraption that holds it into the walls of the car. You're gonna need to separate the spring from the end piece. The end piece doesn't move, so if you get a screwdriver in and pry the spring towards the seat and then lift the whole seat up the slot and into the hole, it sounds easy, but it's surprisingly difficult. So give yourself some time with this. The last piece is the cushion itself. The cushion is just two screws along the back of it. And once those are removed, the whole thing is very light and pretty easy to pop out. It comes out in one piece. If you wanted to, you could probably take out these seatbelt buckles and the bars that they're attached to. We just chose to work around them. Always put your screws back in so you don't lose them. Spoken like a guy who lost some screws. And do yourself a favor, put the screws back where you found them. Future you will thank you. And that's it. Your backseat is ready for your build. Everything in our sleep setup, from our mattress, sleeping bags, window covering, have all stayed the same. So if you're interested about details for that, that's also in our previous video. That's been our Jeep V2 setup. We hope you get some good ideas on how to build your own. If this video was helpful and you found value in this one or our previous Jeep build, don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel for our adventures, and see you in the next one. Will there be a V3? We don't know.